a very, very hard run, you know, and uh, a couple of the teams turned us over pretty heavily, like um, Wigan and uh, Widnes, sorry, and, uh, and Leeds. So we, we went back to basics and looked at their defence again and uh, come up with a new defensive pattern, which has worked well for us. Things seem to be going well against Trinity in particular this season. Now that Yorkshire Cup final win, of course, and then two league victories as well. Yeah, I don't take much credence in that. You know, there's a different ball game tonight. You know, it's um, you know, I, I think they're probably desperate for two points. They're uh, they're down in the bottom of the table, so they're desperate for two points. So you know, they'll be very hungry for a win, and uh, it won't be. It'll be a very very good game. Do you think Trinity can turn it round tonight? Obviously, the occasion of playing Castleford in a nighttime match, it might just provide a little bit of inspiration. Well, I know with David, it'll give them the team to York in the dressing room. They'll come out G'd up and fired up to give Cass a good game. And I, I'm sure, I, I'm confident they'll come win tonight, yeah. Mm, very positive. Is there something in particular you're looking to do today, some sort of game plan you can let us in on? Well, I, I think David knows about the Castleford events. Very well organised. Daryl van der Velde's, of course, got them very well organised. And I think he's looking for little options, probably a little bit wider out where he can just uh, get free because Castleford kind of men make a, what we call a soldier defence a bit tight and I think he's trying to get the quickness of the ball a bit wider out to where Andy Mason is, you know, with his pace because he thinks that's a, you know, a trump card we could play against him, yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. And a lot of expectation among those people today, hoping to see uh, what will be a great local derby. Let's have a look at the two team lineups. This is the side that David Topless has named. Gary Spencer is the fullback. David Jones keeps his place on the wing, had a good game at Oldham last week. A change in the centres, though. Richard Slater plays in three. He's a local junior. And Andy Mason, well, he keeps his place. He's been an ever-present in the Wakefield side. He wears four. And Andy Wilson, he scored a try last week on the Sports Channel, is in five. Jed Byrne plays today at standoff half, the former Wigan man. And Mark Conway is his half-back partner. He's in seven. Big pack of forwards, Adrian Shelford is the prop, wearing eight, the New Zealander. Billy Conway is the hooker. And Andy Kelly gets his uh, chance because John Glancy is injured, so Kelly retains his place. Nigel Bell is in the second row alongside the Australian captain of Wakefield Trinity, Chris Mortimer. And a debut for the loose forward, young uh, Mark Colbeck plays his first game, he's only 20. The coach is David Topless. And Wakefield out and ready on a misty night here in Yorkshire. But thankfully, nice and soft underfoot. Good conditions for good, fast-flowing football. Here's the Castleford side then. Steve Larder plays at fullback. He's an Australian. John Ray comes into the side on the wing. And Sean Irwin is in the centres alongside Grant Anderson, who's been an ever-present. He scored in each of his last three games. David Plange scored that controversial winner in the Yorkshire Cup final against Wakefield. He's on the wing. Now, Graham Steadman has a shoulder injury, so Gary French gets the chance at standoff half tonight, and Tony Smith completes the half-back partnership. He's a 20-year-old with just nine first-team games behind him, born in Wakefield. Lee Crooks needs no introduction. He's the prop forward. Graham Southernwood played for the under-21s in France in Lemieux yesterday, flew back early to play in this match. Dean Sampson is the prop forward. He wears 10. Keith England is in the second row. They call him Beefy. And Jeff Hardy, another Australian, he wears 12. And John Joyner, the evergreen captain of Castleford, is the loose forward. And the coach, another Australian, Daryl van der Velde. And the match referee, just turning, is a man who was uh, featuring on the Sports Channel just seven days ago. Robin Whitfield is the match referee. He's travelled here from Witness. So just about set then, as I say, it uh, is a little misty in this part of Yorkshire. No real problems, though, with the weather. And there's the Castleford side really getting wound up. They've got one or two injury problems. They're missing uh, St. John Ellis, of course, the Great Britain international. He was on the bench in France this afternoon. And according to Daryl van der Velde, that's the best lineup that he could turn out here this evening. It's going to be Castleford who are going to kick off. 
Lee Crooks will get us underway. It's bitterly cold. But a decent crowd again has turned out to watch nighttime football here on the Sports Channel. So Lee Crooks get us underway. An important match for both sides. Castleford to keep the pressure on at the top. And Wakefield, hopefully, from their point of view, to climb away from trouble at the bottom. Talking to David Topless this week, uh, Mike, he said he fancies these chances uh, tonight. Castleford have beaten Wakefield three times this season already. He thinks tonight could be Trinity's turn. Well, he's very, very confident, as you mentioned, Eddie, but uh, maybe the fact that Castleford did have that game midweek uh, obviously will tire them out later in the game. But I think uh, Wakefield really have to look at the situation. Their defensive pattern has been really bad. This is why the penalty was given. There you can see the hooker lying all across him, not allowing the man to play the ball. But they just fall apart in the uh, latter stages of the game. Edwin Shelford then taking it up for Wakefield Trinity. And now here is Andy Kelly. Keeps his place tonight because Glancy's unfit. That's a good long pass. And the first touch for Mark Colbeck. Debut tonight, the number 13 for Wakefield. David Topless has high hopes of this young man. Sees a really bright future for him in the game. Mark Conway with the kick ahead. And it looked as though he was impeded. And the referee agrees. As Conway hacked that ball forward, he was flattened by a Castleford defender. And Wakefield have the penalty. Well, here you see Conway going there. And that's sort of a trip. The Cumberland roll without actually laying your hand on the, the man there that's injured. That was a bit of dangerous play. And quite frankly, it surprises me that he didn't get a stint in the sin bin. He made no attempt to tackle him. He just put him out of the game. So an early penalty to Wakefield and uh, Mark Conway is the man who is going to have a shot at goal here. That's the distance he has. About what, 34 metres? But right in front of the sticks. So a real possibility here for the first points on the board for Wakefield. Conway in good kicking form, we saw last week at Oldham. Can he get his team off the mark here? And give them a real confidence boost against Castleford. He struck it cleanly enough, but he's a bit disappointed with that. It just shaved the left hand upright, and so it stays at Wakefield nil, Castleford nil. Castleford restart. Wakefield get the ball back immediately. Gary Spencer from full back. Good driving run. Met by Keith England. Wilson, this is now Shelford. The Yorkshire Cup final produced a real battle between the two number eights, Shelford and Crooks. Expect nothing less than that tonight. Another penalty. Robin Whitfield making his intentions known. Lee Crooks penalised for laying on again. There he is, Lee Crooks. And the referee having none of this at all. You'll see Crooks take the over-the-top technique. Man of the match, midweek, against Rochdale, back to his best. Wakefield restart then. Dean Jones in possession. Probably fact about him, he's a bingo caller part-time in Chorley. Dean Jones, uh, David Jones rather, they call him Legs 11 in the dressing room. Will he be calling the shots tonight, I wonder? Mark Conway. Jed Byrne at standoff tonight. Mason lets it bounce past him. This is Wilson. Good tackling Castleford. Wilson's injured. Here's Nigel Bell. Last tackle. Coming up. Conway's kick over the top. 
a fumble and a knock on bad mistake from Sean Irwin certainly was good position and then makes a real meal of it referee on the spot scrum down to patch lock horns ball comes out Wakefield's way this is number four Andy Mason Byrne is the dummy half here's Gary Spencer Castleford have worked overtime on their defence in recent weeks Shelford what a big hit Keith England over the top and Gary French down below Colbeck first touch or rather second touch for him Billy Conway two Conways in this Wakefield side Billy and Mark that's the last tackle there's Mark Conway cousin of the number nine Ball's come out on Wakefield's side. Quick thinking by Slater. He grabbed it. And Wakefield have six more. They're only three metres away from the line. Castleford's defence been worked on by the coach. They'll have to be good to stand up to this test. Shelford. There's a knock on, that's a mistake from the New Zealander. You won't want to see this many times. That really was a poor attempt. He knows it. Castleford's head and feed, they get the possession back. There's their win. to work their way out of trouble Wakefield doing well penning them back there near the 10 meter mark high kick that one will have almost snow on it real tester on a cold night Wilson allowing the luxury of it to bounce now Spencer Crooks had followed his kick up Castleford have got the early tackling stint in. That statistic means that Wakefield have seen a lot of the football. Nigel Bell. Well, a very bright opening by Wakefield. And against this Castleford strong defence, a little kicking game is what they have to introduce. Mortimer and Crooks tangling off the ball. The touch judge is on. It's all on there. There's a bit of a brew going on. Everyone rushing in. Mortimer and Crooks, and now every player and every official is involved in this. And referee Whitfield, one of the most experienced officials in the game, will have to take some stern action to settle down these Derby Day nerves. Well, it's always on the cards in these derbies. Now you see the referee doing the correct thing, receiving the information from the touch touch. Here you see how it happened. It was a pretty high one. Crooks through the right. And later on, he threw another one. And there you see the referee. He certainly didn't shirk it, did he? And Mr. Crooks has ten minutes to cool his heels in the sin bin. Well, he looked wound up for the match before the kickoff. <laughs> and by the looks of things, he was just a little bit too tightly wound up. So Castleford are reduced to 12 for 10 minutes. Can Wakefield make it pay? Well, this is a good advantage for the Trinity boys. Spin it out wide. Make use of that one-man advantage. Conway. And this is Kelly. Kelly. 
The two Conways combined. Nice run around that. That's a good driving run from Nigel Bell. Billy Conway to Mark Conway. Shelford. Big gap has opened up for Shelford. There's Jones. Jones's kick over the top, following it himself. Well read by Larder. Jones hit the deck. He appeals to the referee. Referee has none of it. Well, he was certainly pushed off the ball there, but good play by the Castlefoot fullback, Steve Larder. He read it well. Good kick by Jones. Really sparkling opening by the Wakefield boys. So the match being played in the Castleford 22. Peter Hutton is on sidelines and watching. Two bits of news from down here. One about the Wakefield substitution. Chris Perry, number 14, on for Andy Wilson. Andy Wilson in the dugout with double vision. And Nigel Bell, who's still playing, he has a suspected broken nose after that incident that caused the sin winning. So Nigel Bell, suspended, broken nose, and Chris Perry there on for Andy Wilson. Another handling error from Castleford. That's the fourth that they've made, and Trinity have made three. But this was a well, a bad fumble in the end by Hardy. But he was trying to set uh, the man supporting him free, wasn't he? Certainly was. Gary French there. There you see Castleford's real big problem at the moment. They haven't had a great deal of possession, but when they've had it, they've taken it too quickly. They've got to calm themselves down. Remember the down to 12 men. Lee Crooks in the sin bin for 10 minutes. Richard Slater in possession for Wakefield. There's David Topless, the Wakefield coach, watching earnestly from the stands. That was good play from Shelford. It released Perry. Castleford read the situation well, though. Sampson and Southernwood bringing him down. Southernwood and Anderson. Now Conway. Here's Jed Byrne. Played all the second half at Oldham at standoff last week. Topless has given him his chance to direct operations from that position tonight. That's good tackling by Smith, but perhaps a bit too good, and here we go again. I think that was a high challenge by uh, Tony Smith on his opposite number, Mark Conway. And once again, all hands on deck. Plenty of fire there. And really, the two halfbacks... Isn't always the big fellas that get involved in the punch-ups. Even the little fellas have a go time to time. Let's see it again. It was pretty high. Conway certainly didn't like it. And this is the reason why. So he decides to give him another. And then it was all on. And there you see, well, he did get part of the jumper. Conway threw a right. Smith also a right. Stern lecture from Robin Whitfield is sufficient this time. Both sides, Mike, really must settle down, mustn't they? Because this is the last thing we want to see. Well, for Wakefield's point of view, they want to rattle the side, and the professionalism of Castleford has gone out of the window. They really have to calm things down. They've not got into their game plan at all. Penalty count. Wakefield have five to their credit. Castleford one. And there's another one to Wakefield, offside if they play the ball against Castleford. This is in a kickable position. Surely Conway will have a shot at goal here. Really is up to the Castleford skipper, John Joyner, to get round to his charges. Tell them to settle down. There's a lot of talking going out there, especially from the Wakefield side. They've got to ignore that get into their coach's pattern. So this uh, attempt for Mark Conway to set the scoreboard moving. He's kicked it this time and Conway scores his 42nd goal of the season and Wakefield Trinity have taken a 2-0 lead. A lead I think that they deserve. Well, it's been all Wakefield so far, and I'm sure that Daryl Vandervelt 
will send the message out very, very quickly. And as you can see, Castleford taking their time. That's the thing they have to do. And of course, it eats up the seconds so that this fella can get it back on. And on he goes. Lee Crooks back on and out of the sin bin. So the first points of the evening, 2-0 to Wakefield. We still, of course, await the first try. And a little interesting statistic for you. If a try is scored tonight, it'll be the 152nd try this season here on the Sports Channel. Rich entertainment from the Rugby League players this season indeed. Kelly with a good driving run. Colbeck, and he gives it to Conway. Conway's chip over the top. Always looking to do that and work that move, and that's good following up by Shelford. The big man moving forward and bringing Lada down. That's a type of enthusiasm that Wakefield have to be looking for. Can they keep it up? Three defeats against Castleford for Wakefield this season. One in the Yorkshire Cup, one in the Regal Trophy, one in the First Division. About time, David Topless says that the tide is turned, but this is a good move from Castleford. Broken down now, though as John Race filled it. A knock on again. Well, it wasn't the best of passes, but he should have got that. He was open, and the Wakefield defence was all at sea. The wingman was nowhere to be seen. Burn doing well, keeping the movement going. Chris Perry on a driving run. Now this has got possibilities for Wakefield. What a good run from Perry, the substitute. And a good chase and pull down by the evergreen John Joyner. Wakefield is swarming forward. Jed Burn, Kelly. Good run, Kelly. Crooks is leaning all over him again. Conway. Spencer, the fullback. Mark Conway once more. That's a good ball. Mortimer. Bell. Good tackling from Castleford. You can see why they've worked on the defence. Shelford. Got the pass out. Slater was almost through. Last tackle. Wakefield rolling forward. Conway. Chip across the face and hit the post. And eventually... Steve Lada took the safe option. That was nearly a little bit of luck for Wakefield. Certainly was. Well judged kick there. Came off the post. And that is the type of attack that will split up this solid defence. Crooks with the dropout then. Spencer collects. And back come Wakefield once more. Going on his own, Nigel Bell. Well, that's the amount of possession that Wakefield have had. They should really have made it pay more than just the two points they lead by at the moment. Colbeck, a lovely sidestep from the young man. Crooks brings him down. Conway. Shelford. Last tackle again. A real examination of this Castleford defensive line. Another kick through. Perry's chasing it. But this time it runs dead. Well, Wakefield would be annoyed. They've seen so much of the football, but they still haven't scored the try. Well, they're probing. They're really trying everything and throwing it all at this Castleford defence. And full credit to the Castleford side. They really do have their defensive system at top level. But that's the type of football. This kicking game will eventually break it through. Maybe just a little bit more luck 
needed on the Wakefield side. There was never going to be much, I suppose, between these two sides on the night. It really is a fierce contest. That's good play, though, and this is Tony Smith. He's got support with him. The support has arrived from Grant Anderson. Anderson's heading for the corner, and Anderson is over. That's a great try from Castleford. They've sprung from defence to attack. And Grant Anderson scores his tenth try of the season. A try in each of his last four matches now. Wonderful support play. This is Smith. Look at the step. He's looking for the support. There it is. And the centre digs in deep. Notice the little step outside. Now this is the strength of the man. It just goes to show, never give up the effort. That's the second effort, and that gained in the try. Notice how Smith pulls away towards his supports. Now watch this little step. He turns Conway inside out, and the upper body strength. Look how he keeps pumping those legs and fully deserved the try. Grant Anderson, number four for Castleford, knows what it's like to score tries against Wakefield Trinity. Ran in a hat-trick against them two seasons ago. He's off the mark against the old rivals here tonight and he's given Castleford the lead after they've had to withstand so much pressure from the home team. Lee Crooks then to tag on the extras. It's kickable for a player of this fellow's quality. But not tonight. So, Castleford have the lead. Wakefield 2, Castleford 4. And on my watch, just over 29 minutes of this first half gone. Well, there you see Lee Crooks, and there's the coach. He'll be very happy with that. And it all came about from a lovely little short ball by Lee Crooks. Rugby League, always a game of taking your chances. Castleford have had one, and they've taken it. French. Ball inside. David Plange has crept in off the wing. Southernwood. Joiner to Crooks. Oh, and Crooks has almost surrendered the pass to Kelly. Kelly still can't pick it up. I don't think the referee would be fooled, and he isn't. Kelly knows that the line was begging for him there as he swept onto that pass from Lee Crooks. Well, here you see Kelly. Now, when he dropped it, it didn't actually hit the ground. Now, here's Crooks. He takes it. Now, it hits his foot. So that would not have been a knock-on. And Kelly made a mess on the second attempt. So, Castleford get out of jail again. Sean Irwin for them. They're moving quite sweetly now. Plans, that's good tackling though from Richard Slater. Crooks, always looking to get over the advantage line, Lee Crooks. Former Hull and Leeds prop forward. French, good long pass out to the far side. The kick ahead. Spencer's read it. And the referee has blown a whistle. The touch judges come on. Well, it's an off-the-ball incident in back play. The kick through. And there you see the referee indicating that he was shouldered off the ball. You see it in the replay, there you go. Richard Slater, the culprit, and the resulting penalty. Lee Crooks then will have a shot at goal here from almost exactly the same position that he missed the conversion attempt a few minutes ago. He's got his sights in. And an interesting stat about Lee Crooks, although he's been in the sin bin for 10 minutes tonight, he's already put in 18 tackles. 
to the big drop forward. He is working overtime for what he hopes will be winning money here tonight. He's kicked it this time. Used the conversion attempt to get his sights in. This time, felt confident enough to slot the ball neatly over. Castleford stretched the lead, 6-2. Wonderful kick there. And the man who's known all over the world, played, of course, in Australia. Lee Crooks, a champion, of course, with Hull in 1982-83. One of the few players in this Castleford side that actually knows what it's like to win a championship. Playing like this, with defence like this, and I know that they fancy that they have the easier run-in of the top three sides. Castleford just could be the dark horses in this season's first division title race. Remember, Hull have got to go to Wigan and Witness in the next month. Two matches that could have a crucial bearing on where the pennant ends up at the end of this season. Crooks' kick ahead again. That took a neat little finger bias. Good play here by the prop forward. Took a step to the blind side. Wakefield were expecting the ball to go out wide. Wonderful kick. Typical Australian style football on the Castleford side. Very strong defence. Keep the ball down and keep Wakefield pinned down in their own quarter. And what's more, one against the head for Castleford. Gary French. In the side, the number six, because Graham Stedman has a shoulder injury. Would have been interpreted as a big blow, that for Castleford. French seizing his chance. Smith, now Crooks, good ball, Anderson finds Plans. almost exactly a carbon copy of the try he scored in the corner in the Yorkshire Cup final, this time though a foot in touch. Yes, yeah, good play here by Castleford, but Wakefield are in awful trouble with their defensive pattern, they're hanging back, they're not moving up forward, and that can only spell disaster. David Plange, the number five for Castleford. By day, he erects satellite dishes on the homes of Yorkshire. Good on him. Looks like he's going to be very busy in the next coming months. <laughs> we hope so. Colbeck, the dummy half. Offside, though, against Grant Anderson. Have to play the ball penalty Wakefield Trinity well that's a risk that you take here we see the replay no doubt about it he tried to come back onside a little bit too late but they do move up very quickly the reason why the centers try to move up in a dish-like pattern is so that it forces Wakefield to play down the corridor the middle of the field really is an Australian tactic, isn't it, to move up quickly at the play of the ball. We saw that in the series when the Aussies were over here. Kelly, that's a good run. And Dean Sampson, who is the son of a former Wakefield Trinity centre, he's the man who pinned him. Shelford. A little gap has opened up. That's good running from Jed Byrne. Nice pass inside, too, to Slater. And good tackling again. Good chasing to close the man down from Castleford. Wakefield still haven't finished, though. There's our part-time bingo caller, Jones. Conway. Great run from Conway. He's opened the defence up here. Oh, over the top of Mason. Still, they managed to keep the move going, though. Spencer and Bell. And what's more, they have six more, says the referee. Colbeck. 
two 18 games after a broken leg and David Toppler saw enough to pitch him into the first team tonight. Burn, one minute of this first half left. Mason, just couldn't release the pass. Important moments these for Wakefield, how important it would be if they could get over for the try. Shelford, in possession. On his own, Conway, he's in! Conway has chosen exactly the right moment to score his first try of the season. Billy Conway, the hooker, brings Wakefield back into the match at just the right psychological moment. It's his birthday on Thursday. It's the birthday also of Mark Conway, his cousin, and they'll be celebrating on Thursday and tonight. Certainly was, and this was a good run by Shelford. He's had a strong game. Now look how the hooker sees that the Castleford defence. You'll see the gap there. They have not shifted across. He takes full advantage. And Conway in for a good try. Good thinking by the little hooker there. I thought Wakefield had blown it when the halfback should have gone earlier. But that really was good thinking. He saw the gap was there. And for once in this first half, Castleford fell apart in defence. So Mark to convert Billy's try and does. It's the Conway double act. Billy Conway with the try, Mark Conway with the conversion and Wakefield have hit the front right on the stroke of half time. Certainly is the Philip they needed. There's the man in your picture. I thought he'd done the wrong thing. He stepped back inside. If he'd have gone for the left corner, I'm sure he would have got there. But it makes no difference. He's still got the smile on his face when his relative, the hooker, got the four points. So what will that do for the second half? Such an important moment to strike just before half-time in any team sport. Rugby League, no exception. Spencer for Wakefield. And there is the half-time siren. One minute of stoppage time played. And so Wakefield go off, having just edged ahead up towards half-time. Good crowd at Bellevue. They've enjoyed what they've seen. Wakefield ahead, eight points to six. Who's going to win the derby? Will it be Wakefield or Castleford? We'll be back after this break. Top tacklers Dean Sampson and Graham Southernwood. The number nine in your picture now with the football, who played for the under-21s in France yesterday. Perhaps the way that he has tackled, the reason why they elected to fly him back before the end of the trip this afternoon. The other 21s winning, by the way, in record-breaking fashion yesterday, 48 points to two. So a good weekend for British Rugby League in France, across the channel. Not a bad night for British Rugby League here at Wakefield. We've got another game and a half on our hands. Here's Crooks. Sampson, first receiver. What will... Dal van der Velde have said to his players because they defended stoutly and now they're finding themselves playing catch-up football, Mike. Well, he obviously would have told them to go into their game pattern because Wakefield did suck them in and that's why the brawls were on. The Wakefield players really were niggling the Castleford side and they just went right off the boil. It was as simple as that. They have to get into their game plan, otherwise they could finish up on the losing side. Here come Castleford now, though. That's a good run from Anderson, but good tackling. And what's more, it's on the last tackle. The tackler was Jed Byrne. And possession turns over, although Anderson's not too keen to give Wakefield the ball. There's Dean jo uh, David Jones. Shelford. Oh, he spills it. To knock on, despite the fact that uh, Billy Conway dropped on it to retain possession. Well, there you see the impact just squeezed the ball out. That gives you some idea of how keen this Castleford defence is. They really do move up very quickly. Well, 
that uh, should think so too, a penalty at the scrum, because that was feeding in the best possible way. Tony Smith played that behind the second row's legs and rightly has been penalised by Robin Whitfield. They're leaning at the referees, but not that much. Well, he looks a little bit shocked, but he shouldn't be really, as you mentioned, Eddie. It really was nearly at the lock forwards for him. Mark Conway, Chris Mortimer. Now Kelly. Shelford again. Released by Wigan at the end of last season. Summered in Manly with Graham Lowe, his coach at Central Park. And he might well be on the jumbo jet heading down under to Manly again in the not too distant. Mason, though, in possession for Wakefield. Good kick from Mark Conway. His kicking game was important last week at Oldham and again here tonight. Yes, look at the position of the halfback there. Gave himself plenty of time, picked his spot well. So important now, this kicking game, modern day rugby league. It's all a matter of putting the opposition under that pressure and hope that that mistake comes. French, Casford swinging the ball underneath their own posts. And Anderson, oh, the two centres there, flashing heads, like a pair of heavyweight boxers. And that's the type of thing that I was mentioning earlier, Eddie. This Wakefield side really are saying a few things, mixing it with the Castleford players. Trying to put them off their game. Hardy. And the touch judge is on again. The two centres, Slater and Anderson, involved again. Well, this, this, really was, why. this really was bad play by Anderson. And he can think himself very, very lucky indeed that he's not getting an early shower. That really was an attempt to put the elbow and try to disfigure the young fellas first. Well, referee Whitfield is laying the law down. And Castleford have the penalty. Well, that has surprised me. That was an odd one from Mr. Whitfield. All a matter of interpretation, though, I suppose. Plan just come in field again. It's been a little bit starved of the football out on the wing. Southernwood and Joyner. Oh, French went without it. Wakefield have it back with Kelly. Quick thinking from the prop forward, and again, Billy Conway. This is Slater. Swarming cover defence from Castleford. Mortimer. Shelford. Good ball, Byrne. Keeps it going. Byrne's been laid out. Conway. was uh, really injured in that as he slipped a beautiful pass inside. Mortimer though continuing the move for Wakefield. Conway. Oh, it was a pass that was about two yards in front of Mason. And quick as he is, Mason simply couldn't get his fingertips to it. Well, here you see Conway floating the long ball out there. Mason really wasn't at full stretch. He should have run on a little bit faster to that. Wakefield desperate for a win, they've slipped down the table to 11th from 5th in recent weeks, having failed to win any of their last five league matches. Only one point from 12, 
and that coming in the draw with Warrington and they're up against it now here to stop Tony Smith but stop him they do a copybook tackle from Gary Spencer the fullback reading that situation well Joyner and Crooks saw a gap knocked it over the top Perry has to chase it and Jeff Hardy following up and that was a risky play the ball too pressure tactics from Castleford that is the Wakefield try line and Mason's running across it good tackling from Castleford Shelford though taking the weight of four of them to bring him down This will That's test the medal of Wakefield here. Last tackle. They kick simply for a breather. Plunge for Castleford. Good running, Slater. Well tackled. Eight six. Wakefield are ahead quarter of an hour or thereabouts of the second half gone nothing to choose between them is there Mike? certainly isn't and one gets the impression that whoever scores next the other side could well fall apart French nice run and sidestep oh what a good tackle number 10 Andy Kelly thunderous challenge on Gary French Castleford though still haven't finished they have now that's the turnover that was on the last tackle that tackle on Joyner well Joyner will be fuming over that you saw him he was trying to get the ball away and there was no support at all he took the gamble rather than taking a kick but they have to back up the man with the ball that was awful Shelford again Back a risky pass. My word, he was lucky that Perry was alert to that. Slight inexperience showing from the young loose forward. That's a good driving run from Kelly that found Perry. Last tackle again. Wakefield under enormous pressure. Mortimer kicks for territory. Plange collects. tackling oh and he's in touch the elbow went in touch <laughs> oh well that's the spirit of rugby league in this game well good play indeed no doubt about it he was still moving all the time good play by david jones wakefield have the possession spencer Joined the club a fortnight ago again from Leeds, back in his second spell at Wakefield, Gary Spencer. Certain appearance in the Leeds dressing room of John Gallagher reduced Spencer's chances this season. There's a knock on. Slater disagrees, says Joyner was impeding him. Was the referee right? Well, did Joyner pull the ball out? Yes, he did. It was only a little one. The referee missed it. And that's the difference between a young fellow on your screen and a man like Joyner for many, many years. Right, Peter Hutton on touchline, news of a substitution. Yeah, the man coming off, number 13, John Joyner, has rib injury problems. The man who's on is number 14, Martin Kettridge. So, John Joyner, the veteran off. Another injury blow. And there's the fresh pair of legs from Martin Kettridge. Kettridge on the transfer list but happy to play on for the Castleford calls for the time being Crooks takes three to bring him down all the time
Lada finds French and Crooks again. He was taking a bit of a breather there, I think. Almost caught him unawares. There's Ketterich. Difficult to come into a match of this pace straight off the bench, I would think. Offside against Wakefield. Have to play the ball. And another little skirmish there. Mark Conway, funny little guy, throwing his weight around. And so is the big fella from Castleford, Keith England. Don't call him beefy for nothing. Penalty to Castleford then. A chance to level the scores for Lee Crooks. Swung one over from a far more difficult position than this in the first half. The odds must be on Crooks kicking this. And then stand by for a great last 20. He's pulled it wide, I don't believe it. And neither does he. That could be the difference between winning and losing pay. Certainly could be. And it's up to Lee Crooks now. Only one from three. He really has to lead the Castleford side. Especially with the fact that John Joyner has left the field. And Castleford really have got to get their act together. Too much one-out football. So the score stays at 8-6 in Wakefield's favour. This match really is tight. To be fair, Wakefield in good form at home this season. Wins against Wigan and Hull. It's the away form that's let them down. Well, and the same can be said of Castleford. They haven't put it together when they've left Weldon Road. French, can they put it together in the last 20 here? That's a good run. Crooks, Lee Crooks has gone over, and Lee Crooks has put Castleford back in the lead. A great try from Lee Crooks. Try number four of the season. What's more, it's right next to the posts. And look at the jubilation on those Castleford players' faces. Lovely pass inside there by the 5'8", and watch that lovely ball there by Hardy. And the big prop forward dives in to erase the memory of that missed kick. Look at this wonderful ball back inside. Crooks steaming on. It's a long time since I've seen the big league Crooks run that fast. He'll have enjoyed that one. And what's more, he has the chance to tag on the extras. This is the easiest kick he's had all night. And he's kicked it this time. So a six-pointer for Lee Crooks. And Castleford have edged ahead again. Wakefield 8, Castleford 12. And is that the try and conversion at just the right minute? Under a lot of pressure in the, the game. Uh, I think Wakefield have had the majority of the possession. It's all credit to the lads have stuck in and tackled really well. In that first half, I think the figures were 28 minutes Wakefield possession, Castleford 13. They really did stick at their task, didn't they? Uh, they did. It's a tremendous effort. And considering it's the second game in, two, in a week, uh, great credit to the lads. I just hope we can hang in now for the late, for late two minutes. A tough game, though, and you picked up a knock yourself. Uh, yes, the tough games are all tough games now in the first division. Just a bang in the ribs. Hopefully it won't be too long before I'm back. Thanks a lot, John. Thank you. John Joyner, one of the great servants of the game. Talks a good game, too. Kick over the top again from Conway. Larder read the situation perfectly. Nice change of direction too. Good tackling from Nigel Bell to bring him down. Good play by the former Illawarra in Sydney. Player, he really has defended well. Linked in 
on the very few opportunities that Castleford have had the possession. A bit more news from down on the touchline. Andy Wilson, the number five for Wakefield, who went off with double vision in the first half, is set to come back on. He's going to replace number three, Richard Slater. So the two coaches really are trying to sort out the winning points here. Penalty to Wakefield. Lee Crooks hacking down Nick Dutois. Then saying something out of turn. And so... Castleford have to concede another 10 metres. Well, it was dangerous kicking, no doubt about it. And I don't think that it needed all that antics from Nick Gatois. He got away with it. Pretty close to the Oscars now. That substitution's going to be made. Slater is going off. Andy Wilson coming on. So David Topless really is trying all he knows, isn't he? certainly is, but it's getting a lot of help by silly play by Lee Crooks. Experienced player like that really shouldn't have given Wakefield this opportunity. Well, Wakefield really do need the win here tonight. They've got away trips to Bradford and Widnes in the next seven days. There's no easy matches in rugby league and they are two of the toughest trips that Wakefield will make all season. They're at the wrong end of the table. Fourth bottom. So much pressure. Mark Conway. Well, he's the boy that can pull it out for Wakefield. He's probed, he's tried everything as a little halfback. Burn with the bomb. One to test Steve Larder. Larder's up to it as he has been all night. And what's more, he has the strength to come away with the football tucked under his arm. What a good tackle by Mortimer. Good football from both sides. Castleford, I'm sure, will try to get the ball, reef it right downfield. Twelve eight. Castleford are ahead. Looking for the try that would really seal it now. Plunge. Plunge winded, I think. Big England. Brought down by Conway and by Mortimer. This is the last tackle. Oh, mistake. What a silly thing to do. <laughs> Grant Anderson shaping up for Gary French, the man who's Pull back for a knock-on. Well, once again, a silly mistake. Could prove costly for the Castleford side. It wasn't the best pass, though, was it, to be fair to French. Burn now. Feeds Mason. Mason on a run. The support was either side of him. Wakefield must play quickly here. Here's Dutrois. Big South African, former Wigan and Barrow player. Tempted out of retirement. Referee allows that to go on. Mortimer, and here come Wakefield with Kelly. Kelly stopped just five metres short. What Wakefield would give for a try here. Conway, long pass. Shelford, Shelford going on his own. Shrugging the tacklers off. Billy Conway again. Good defence, Castleford. The door slams shut in his face. Is that a signal that, Conway, uh, that Shelford made behind his back there? We'll see. Mortimer, Wilson. Here's Mason. Again, a great defensive tackle from Gary French. Last chance for Wakefield. Mortimer, the bomb. The highest of the night. Larder's underneath it. It's spilled, though. Wakefield have six more. Shelford. Well, they're all over the shop. But if they're in here, they'll be delighted. They're just short. It's another six. Wakefield wipes the tackle. Whitfield wipes the tackle count clean again. Mark Conway. Good tackling, Castleford. Great tackle from Irwin and Smith. Dutrois. Well, it's all or nothing now for Wakefield. Byrne. Over the top to Kelly. Nearly released it. Thought better of it. Ten metres short. Billy Conway, Shelford, still Shelford. 
Referee says that's five gone. This is the last chance. Mark Conway. Back to Kelly. Juggling with it. Keeps it going. No, it was a knock-on. It's the turnover. Well, how much can this Castleford defence take? It really has been an heroic performance in the last five minutes. Wakefield have just thrown everything at them, and they've been equal to the test. Is that the last chance gone for Wakefield Trinity? Into the final ten minutes now. It's do or die for Wakefield at this moment. And Castleford has stood up well to 12 consecutive tackles. Crooks hoofs the ball downfield just to give his defence a bit of a breather. What a wonderful kick there by Crooks. Maybe he's made up for that silly error when he kicked out and gave away the penalty that resulted in Wakefield applying all that pressure. Castleford will want to keep Wakefield down in this half. Wakefield have hit the 100 mark. Castleford passed that mark a good while ago. Dutrois with a strong run gives it to Wilson. Again, the cover defence is there. Mason and Conway to Shelford. Shelford's running strongly, gives it to Wilson. Wilson has Jones outside him, going on his own. Wilson heading for the corner. Oh, Mason was pushed out of the way there. Referee allows it to go. And it's Jeff Hardy who's got it back. Look at Wilson going, he did the right thing back inside. There definitely was a push there. Castleford lucky. Wakefield throwing everything at them. It's good play by the wingman. Referee wanting to get on with the game. French injured, but the player allowed to take the play of the ball. And this is where Castleford will look for the big kick downfield again. Again, the ball is spilled. And if Castleford lose this game, they've only themselves to blame. Silly play. They're the team that's in front. They should have been looking for the kick downfield. Crooks had already done one a couple of minutes earlier. And the referee not happy with the way that scrum was formed and the ball went straight through. So he's pulled it back to reform. The handling errors, by the way, all square at nine apiece. Scrum's going Wakefield's way slightly, and that's another one. But again, he's not happy. Sorry to keep harping on about it, but this really is a shambles, isn't it, the scrumming? However, Wakefield have got the possession back. Jed Byrne. Well, he's kicked that forward on the, the first tackle. Not the wisest tactics. No, he lost his cool there. They should have settled down and gone for the move. That really is the type of play that can give your mates losing money far too often. Four points the difference. Just six and a half minutes left for play. Wakefield eight, Castleford 12. This is the last tackle. Will Crooks be able to kick again here? He has. But I think it's gone out on the full. And as it was the sixth tackle, possession will automatically turn over. Well, it was good play by Crooks. He came off the side of his foot. But Castleford looking to one commit suicide. Wakefield come forward again. Wilson. Grant Anderson 
Lucky to get away with that, swarming all over Wilson. Castleford's defence has regrouped. Here's Nigel Bell. Remember playing on with a suspected broken nose, Bell. Brave performance from him. Into the last five minutes. Jed Byrne for Wakefield. And Adrian Shelford, by the way, the number eight for Wakefield, is the man of the match. There he is, in possession now. Kelly! Kelly going through the last man larder, but look who was there to cover Lee Crooks. Once again, this Castleford defence is being stretched. Mason! Jones! Wilson! Oh, Wilson surrenders it. Bell collects it back for Wakefield. Referee wiping the tackle count clean. Trinity have six more. Jed Byrne. Chris Perry. Thunderous challenges all evening from Castleford. They really have defended magnificently. Look at the gulf in possession time between the two sides. But Castleford are ahead. 12-8. Wakefield need the victory. And Mason trying to conjure it up. Andy Wilson. It's catch-up town now for Wakefield. They've just got to throw this ball about with gay abandon. Take all the risks. Mark Conway. Dutois, but he's dropped it. Referee looking for a decision from his touch judge. It's a knock-on. Well, there's never any doubt that Dutois knocked that ball forward. It was an awful pass. It was a pass of a very tired man. And there'll be some tired people out there, especially the Castleford players. What a defensive effort from them tonight. Three minutes to go. Wakefield eight points, Castleford 12, Castleford in possession. They'll surely just soak up these six tackles, and if they don't get out of their own half, they'll kick for ground. Well, they're in the Wakefield half now. One of the closest matches we've had on the Sports Channel this season. A real local derby. Certainly is. It's had plenty of spice early in the game. Some glimpses of very classy football. Defences have been on top for most of the game. And of course, Castleford will go second clear on their own if they win tonight. It's not only the winning pay that Lee Crooks and company are playing for, it's a place in the top two. Well, here's the big forward, that's the experience, making sure that the ball went into touch, didn't put it up in the air to give Wakefield a chance of a long run downfield. Less than two minutes to play. And look at that great tackling from Gary French on Jed Byrne, the two number sixes tackling. Nigel Bell once more. The last big effort from Wakefield Trinity. Have they got it in those legs to win this match? Remember, Castleford coming into this game after a victory in midweek. Four straight league wins for them. This will make it five. Conway kicks ahead. But it's Larders. And as we're in the last minute, expect Castleford simply to hang on for six. That was sensible running by the Australian fullback there. Beating up the time, he brought all the Wakefield of defence across. David Plange, that's two gone. Wakefield must get the ball back if they're to rescue this match now.
Shelford limping heavily. It's been a big effort from both these sides tonight. Crooks. Good driving run from Crooks. And we're now in stoppage time. And Castleford are on the last tackle. Good deep kick. And it finds touch. And Steve Larder read that situation perfectly. Well, it may look boring. Maybe basic. But it gets results. The pressure once again back on the Wakefield Trinity side. This really is the last throw of the dice. Wakefield get the possession back from the scrum. It's Chris Perry in possession. Burn. And now... More, uh, that's Dutrois, and here's Wilson. The last big effort, deep in stoppage time, but there is the full-time siren. The Castleford players punch the air with delight. That's win number four against Wakefield Trinity this season. And Lee Crooks, the big number eight, for my money, the man who has engineered this victory. Big in defence, and when it was mattered, he was big in attack. Scored the vital try next to the pub Castleford, a 12 points to eight victory. Castleford now second in the first division table, but witness who are just behind them, have three games in hand, and Hull also have more games to play. There are the match stats. Wakefield really did see plenty of the ball. Uh, is G.